Welcome to the microeconomic theory course uh, for 21st of April. Um, today we will continue our discussion uh, about auctions. In the previous class we had talked about the second price sealed bid auction where um, each bidders who have a, a privately uh, who, who, who have private valuations about an object say a painting uh, uh, on which they are bidding um uh, where the rule of the game was that the highest bidder will win the object but will pay the second highest bidder's uh, bid uh, as price uh, we analyzed that uh, context and we found out that the base nash equilibrium was for each bidder to actually bid the valuation basically whatever valuation that the bidder has about the object he just bids that um, uh, in in a second price auction um uh, in, and and that was sort of a mutual best response in that case uh today uh, we will talk about the sort of more conventional uh, 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 auction strategy under the sealed bid format uh, which is the first price auction so in the first price auction again there are two bidders we will assume uh, so and 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 uh, we will continue with the assumption that the highest bidder will win the object but the difference with the second price is that in the first price auction the highest bidder actually pays his or her own bid okay so if you are the highest bidder uh, uh, then you you get the object and you pay the bid that you have submitted as price so so uh, to formalize uh, we will Uh, work with two bidders for simplicity as before one and two we will say that uh, bidders uh, valuations are denoted by v1 and v2 okay so v1 is the valuation uh, of bidder 1 for the object and v2 is the valuation of bidder 2 now uh, v1 and v2 are private information okay we had discussed this terminology in the previous class what does it mean for these parameters to be private information it basically means that only bidder one is aware of v1 and only bidder two is aware of v2 what is the actual values of v1 and v2 are so this is this information is private to the parties to the respective parties okay however we we will assume that the bidders know uh, what uh, is the potential distribution from which uh, these valuations are uh, drawn from basically you don't know my valuation but you know that it is in belongs to this range and what are the possible likelihoods of uh, my valuation uh, uh, lying on on a specific part of this range okay so so that's that's the idea so we assume uh, that v1 and v2 are drawn independently from oops from the following uh, distribution so what is the distribution it's uniform 0 1 so vi is drawn from uniform 0 1 for both i equal to 1 and 2 so basically what does this mean it means that the valuations of both bidders um, uh, fall in the range 0 to 1 and the likelihoods uh, or the, the probability distribution over this range 
for a uh, for the valuations are given by this uniform distribution so it's equally likely for both bidders valuation to be near zero or in the middle of bit zero one or in the towards towards one okay and both bidders know about this this is common knowledge this uh, this part is common knowledge among bidders okay so both bidders know know about this uh, while they bid they of obviously know what is their own uh, valuation right so so they know so bidder one knows his actual valuation of v1 but he has no clue about what the actual valuation of v2 is but he he knows that it it, it follows a uniform distribution between zero and one okay and similarly for player two okay so and 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 so so that's the information environment of this of this game uh what are the payoffs payoffs are very simple um um so payoff of player one is v1 minus the price if the bid submitted by player one is bigger than b2 let me let me get rid of price and just write b1, uh, b1 because it's first price option so i can be more specific so if if a player one's bid or if bidder one's bid is higher than bidder two's bid then uh bidder one wins the object and 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 pays price uh, b1 and so then the net payoff is v1 minus b1 okay um and it's zero if b1 is less than b2 in which case one doesn't win the object and similarly for for player two um you can put a greater than equal to sign here i mean if in in reality bids are you can assume that if bids are identical then you know you uh, the auctioneer tosses up a coin so you win with probability half um but here it will not be important because both v1 and b1 and v2 and b2 are going to be continuous functions so the fact that they will actually indeed be equal will be is, is a probability zero event so so you know you can you can ignore uh, uh being very specific about it so so similarly for uh similarly um, pi 2 is also defined accordingly okay um now um to understand uh what will be the sort of equilibrium strategy in this case um you first have to uh, make this observation that bidding above valuation is not a good idea even in this case why because if you bid above valuation and you end up winning uh, then you you pay above valuation uh, so you get negative payoff right so if you bid above your valuation and you end up winning then you you, you get negative payoff and so so bidding above value and and if you bid above valuation there is some posit positive probability that you might win right um, and 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 in in that case you are definitely getting negative payoff in all the cases that you win you will be getting negative payoff because you are paying your own bid so so bidding above valuation is not a good idea it cannot be a best response to any strategy of of the other player so so you will generally bid either equal to your valuation or or below valuation now what you will actually do uh, uh, will will require us to to do some computation to arrive at but we can uh, start with some conjecture about the nature of the bidding function okay so so we begin by making a 
conjecture about the sorry about the bidding function what do i mean by bidding function bidding function is this what is the bid for player i uh, as a function of vi right because we are uh, in a uh, game of incomplete information and we are applying the bayes nash equilibrium concept to solve so here for every possible type you have to uh, specify a strategy or action so your strategy basically is for every possible type you have to specify what the action of the bidder is going to be bidder's action for each so so what are the types the types are the obviously the all possible valuations so so this numbers between 0 and 1 and actions are the bids so for each possible valuation between 0 and 1 you have to specify what the player will bid so so this mapping between valuations and bid is what i am referring to as the bidding function right so that your strategy is the bidding function and and this is what we have to uh, 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 compute what will be the equilibrium uh, nature of this bidding function but to begin with we can begin uh, a conjecture about the the form of the uh, the bidding function so so my making conjecture so 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 we say so let me go to the next page so we say that uh, b j is some a of v j where a is some sorry a is some constant less than or equal to 1 okay so we are saying that the bidding function is linear so that's a conjecture right it could be it could have been something else as well but we are making this conjecture that the bidding function is is linearly uh, a linear function of the valuation so as if my if i get twice uh, uh, my valuation uh, then some number then i bid twice um, i increase my bid by two times right so suppose if my valuation was twice of what it is i would have bid uh, uh, twice as much okay so that's 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 an assumption and and the nature of the relationship is given by this constant a okay and uh, why i say it is less than equal to one because of the assumption that that because of the the observation that i should not be bidding above valuation right so if a is bigger than one then my bid will be above valuation okay um so suppose uh, 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 the nature of this uh, 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 bidding function is linear that, suppose that's the assumption and suppose uh, player j has this a constant um, then the question is what is what is player i the opponent player let's say player i and player j are say the two different players uh, what is player i's best response if player j follows this linear uh, bidding function with with this parameter a okay so uh, we ask what is the best response uh, of player i to player j's oops player j's uh, bidding strategy bj equals to a 
video. Okay. So we are asking this question. Now um, so, so to start with uh, 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 suppose uh, player I's valuation is VI some number VI okay and he bids bi we have to find out what is this bi is okay um when will so the question is if the bid is bi and the opponent is bidding bj when will player i win so player i wins when uh, bi is greater than equal to bj right we know what is bj bj is a vj okay so so player player j is following this linear strategy okay we are assuming it given this strategy we want to find out what is the nature of the bidding function of player i so so is the same thing as saying that player i wins when vj is less than equal to bi by a okay correct now notice from player i's point of view vj is unknown vj is unknown from bidder i's point of view okay which means that player i will have to work with uh, the probability distribution of vj which is known to him so given that the what is the exact value of vj is unknown to player i player i would have to work with the knowledge that he has what what is the knowledge that he has he knows that vj follows a uniform distribution between 0 and 1 right so so vj can be any number between 0 and 1 with equal likelihood of being uh, on any part of the distribution any part of this range with that knowledge he has to find out for any bid bi that that bidder i can say what is the likelihood that bidder i will win player i will win right so basically player i would have to find out so which implies player i can sorry can compute the probability of vj in being below bi by a for any bi that player i can can bid okay can submit as a bid so for any number bi that player i can submit as a bid he can compute what is the likelihood that vj falls below bi by a because he knows that uh, he knows the probability distribution of vj and this is the same in this range of vj uh, he he uh, is also the range where a player i knows that he wins so basically this probability is nothing but the probability of player i winning right because player i wins when this is true right so basically 
pi for every bid b i player i can compute the probability that player i will win for that bid by computing the range of vj uh, that is possible under which he will win okay so we are now almost there to compute the expected payoff so for any bid bi by player i his expected oops his expected payoff is given by with probability vj less than equal to bi by a he wins the object in which case what is his payoff we know vi minus bi right with the rest of the probability when vj is above bi by a then he then player i loses because then b the bid by player j bj becomes higher than bi in which case he gets zero so I, we are not writing that with the residual probability he gets zero so just to emphasize this is player i's probability of win and this is payoff of i when he wins so conditional on winning vi minus bi is the is the payoff and the probability of win is given by this expression so if i multiply it by the two i get expected payoff right uh, now what is the probability what is the expression uh, for probability so uh, of this probability thing we know that vi follows uniform so we know sorry let me go back to the white marker uh, we know that sorry vj follows a uh, uniform between 0 and 1 which implies that the probability of vj being less than bi by a is nothing but bi by a minus the lower limit divided by the upper limit minus the lower limit which is nothing but bi by a okay so this is this is the pdf of, of an uniform distribution okay so we can replace that there uh, so pi 1 then is bi by a times vi minus bi okay so for any bi this is the expect, expected payoff what is what is the uh, objective of uh, player i or bidder i to maximize payoff by choosing a bid for any given vi so player i knows the value of vi player i is, player i is trying to find out what should be his bid okay so player i uh, maximizes sorry maximizes this by choosing bi so what is the first order condition if you take the derivative you get vi by a minus uh, 2 bi by a equals 0 which implies bi equal to vi by 2 okay so we have found the best response so this is the bidding function for player i right so this is a bidding function for player i and this is the optimal bidding function okay so now 
what we have found out is that if player J follows a linear bidding strategy with parameter A, player I also follows a linear bidding strategy. Notice that this is a linear bidding strategy, right? It, it moves, bid moves linearly with valuation, right? So our conjecture about the form of the bidding function, the fact that it is linear, uh, turns out to be true that if you follow a linear bidding strategy then it is my best response to follow a linear bidding strategy which basically means that if i follow linear then your best response is also going to be linear okay moreover because problem is symmetric from both players point of view from both bidders point of view their bidding their valuations are drawn from the same distribution and and their objective functions are similar so it's a it's a it's a completely symmetric problem from both players point of view so so it, we can apply this logic of symmetry uh, by saying that in in the Bayes Nash equilibrium, it must be the case that the bidding function of player i must be same as bidding function of player j. The functional form would be similar, which basically means that a must be equals to half right if you follow a uh, if you follow linear strategy with parameter a then it is my best response to follow linear strategy with parameter half right therefore for any a right so if i follow a linear best uh, strategy with parameter half then it is your best response to also follow linear strategy with parameter half right because for any a your best response is to get half parameter so with if i follow half then you also follow half right so that means that b1 star equals v1 by 2 and b2 star equals v2 by 2 is a base nash equilibrium of the first price yield bid auction okay so this this basically solves solves the problem uh, in this problem what is very important to keep in mind is the fact is how to compute this expected payoff so basically you have to figure out this if you can't figure out this then you will not be able to solve the problem right the fact the probability so basically first you have to find out the range of valuations of the other party over which you actually can win uh, and then the second step is to find out the probability that the that the other parties other bidders valuation actually lies in that relevant range and then find out the expected payoff using that probability okay so so these if you follow these three steps then you will be able to compute the expected payoff written here in which case after that you know then it's straightforward uh, maximization which is kind of easy and then you apply symmetry to find out the symmetric the, the base nash equilibrium strategies okay so that's that these are the sort of sequence of, of steps you have to take to compute uh, base nash equilibrium okay um uh, now first price and second price seal bid auctions are only two uh, auction formats there are several other auction uh, that you can study um, one possible case is what is called all pay auction uh, so one possible case is called uh, all pay auction in all pay auction uh, you basically pay upfront your bid and then uh, the highest bidder wins the object so here it's a bit strange in the sense that whether or not you win the object you pay your bid okay so basically suppose you are bidding for an uh, um, art uh, piece and and you submit or everybody submits bid simultaneously and there uh the highest bidder wins the object but everybody pays whatever bid they are submitted even though uh, everybody except the winner are not getting the uh, painting right 
now this may seem strange to you but in many contexts you can apply this kind of all pay auction uh, uh, um, uh, uh, model uh, let me give you an example so suppose think about a model of corruption say suppose there is a government position that is available and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, applicants who want to who want to get through uh, who want to get that government position right it's a lucrative position and and it is possible that you can manipulate uh, and influence the 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 um, you can influence the the person who's in charge of deciding the bureaucrat who's in charge of deciding uh, who will get that government position, this government job, let's say. And the way to influence it is by, by paying bribe to that bureaucrat. So, so this is a context where even though you may not finally get to uh, uh, have the government job, you still are trying to bribe to influence, right? So, so you can think about bribing by uh, a potential applicant aspirant of the government position as a bidder and he's bidding by a bribing, right? So the bids are basically bribes. And this is the all pay option because whether or not you get the government position, you have to pay upfront, right? So you have to pay, you have to pay the bid you have to pay the bribe and then wait to see whether you get the job and and maybe the government and say this bureaucrats decision is whoever pays me the highest will get the government uh, will get the job right so so then it becomes it takes over uh, this con uh, you know it, it takes the form of this all pay auction format right so you pay up front and then you wait to see whether you you you, you paid the most or not uh, to, uh, to to realize whether you are the winner uh, think about lobbying, right? So, so various industries lobbies for policies uh, to favor them, uh, lobbies with the government. So, this again, it's an all-pay auction because you are basically investing a lot of money by uh, to to recruit lobbyists uh, and and paying for their uh, uh, expertise to to lobby with the government without knowing whether the the lobbyists will be successful in changing the policy in your favor so here the policy is like the 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 uh, the prized object over which various lobbying is uh, industries are are, are are sort of uh, fighting over so 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 then again uh, it will be a kind of all pay auction where uh, uh, the f the industries pay up front to to to, to lobby for uh, policy change which will which will happen later right so 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 this is something that uh, i think uh, there is a question on this in the in the in the in the homework so again uh, you can try to think about so uh, uh, it it also gives you the question gives you the form of the the nature of the the bidding function right uh, uh, so here in the first price auction we have talked about uh, linear so in this all pay auction the form uh, is quadratic right it's it's square so the bidding function form is quadratic so bids are some constant time valuation squared right so that's given in the problem so given this find out if uh the opponent follows this quadratic bidding form what is your best response so that's that's what the you know your 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 uh, objective should be and again you have to find out the range over which for any bid bi what is the range over which you will win and what is the probability that it will fall opponent's valuation fall in that range and then use that to compute expected payoff to, to find out optimal bidding strategy okay so 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 let me uh, uh, stop for here for the for the auction uh, uh, application in the in the next part i will talk about another application thank you